Hello, everybody. Welcome to Newcastle Fans TV on a 7 nil win for Newcastle United. We not more come. Let we, let we have one moment because it's the first time ever in five years, day in YouTube, that I can say that we've won 7 nil. <laughs> I don't care if it's against League Two side. I'm going to enjoy it tonight. I'm with Adam to the left of me, to your right, and I've got Sam on my right, which is the left on your screen. Boys, are you happy? How can you not be happy after a 7 nil win? doesn't matter who it's against, like you say. it's um, A result like that breathes confidence through everyone. I'm sure it does. We don't have the group video later on because there's only us three who've watched the game. The rest are all part-timers. or oh, too tight to pay that tenner. But I think all three of us can say that we thoroughly enjoy paying that 10 quid tonight. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, yeah. I'll begin with Adam. Gillespie, how do you think you got on today? Yeah, wasn't tested much, was he really? Um, but the couple of times, even I think when it was nil nil, a ball came in the box, he caught it. When it was five or six, he, he was catching balls, just takes the pressure off. Again, I think he's one to, I said before the Blackburn game last week, he's, he's one, Darlow should be worried about taking over his number two spot, to be honest. When, uh, yes, he didn't have much to do, block, block the shot, maybe he's not a lot to do, but yeah, give him a, a steady eight. An eight out of ten for Gillespie. Yeah, he, he saved the the Garaga um, mm, shot. I think with three nil up, we're, we're roughly at the time. Mm, yeah. So yeah, it was a good stop by that. So yeah, Gillespie eight out of ten didn't have too much to do. Nice easy work from tonight. Uh, we'll begin with the right back, which originally uh, Sam, I'll come to you with this. Was Emil Craft? He moved to centre back in the second half. Was he tested? Um, no, not really. The defence in the in the main could have had the night off. Um, it, it was it was comfortable as anything. I mean, there's an argument of scoring them not that highly, but just because they didn't have anything to do. But um, I mean, clean sheet, seven nil win. It, it would be it would be harsh, or am I going to be harsh? Mm, no, I'm not going to be harsh. Not when we've just won. 7 nil. so let's give him an 8 why not yeah. Yeah. But, and, and did, did everything that was expected of him, he, he, he was fine, he was comfortable as well he should be uh, for, as a Swedish international playing against a League 2 side yeah, played 2 positions, wasn't testing either 1, 8 out of 10 I'm going to go for the big sexy Jamal Assels, criticised and rightly so for the weekend for his dreadful performance, chipped in with a goal defensively didn't have too much to do um, because he scored the goal, I'm going to whack him up to a nine, Sam. Um, just because the fact he got on the end of it. Maybe the goalkeeper should have done a little bit better for Jamal because it did bounce and I think he should be saving it. But uh, much needed performance and that's probably why mm. he's playing tonight, I feel. But yeah. he'll start on the weekend without a shadow of a doubt. Jamal sells to get the nine. I said in the preview that um, he should start just to get that nice confidence boost performance back into his game. And that's exactly what's happened. So uh, it's nice to be proved right for a change. <laughs> um, Kieran Clark, Adam, you only got 45 minutes. Let's hope that's not a serious, I'm predicting, guessing there, that there may be an injury. But how do you think you got on? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a solid eight. Uh, Kieran Clark's. It's a shame he only got 45, because I think if he got 90, Kieran's, he's one of the lads who's probably knocking on the door to start in the Premier League, uh, given Lascelles' poor form. But as, as Sam said, Lascelles, you know, he, he did step up a bit tonight, even though given the opposition. But Clark, he, he, he did what he did. We, we could talk about him every week on these shows. He very rarely lets us down and makes a mistake. He just needs that bit of a break, whether that's a break of Fernandez or Lascelles getting injured. So not good for them, but for him to get in the team, because I think once he's in the team, I think it'd be difficult to take out. I just think he's just need. Because I, I think Lascelles and Fernandez are going to start most weeks, despite the form. Um, so it was a show. Hopefully, it's not a bad injury because he, he was plagued last year with injuries. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, he's uh, did not been on the first forty-five. Just a shame to see him come off. We'll, we'll see what the club say about why he did come off. I think it's also good that we can rest Fernandez for these games because the back end of uh, last season he was pretty hard to play in every game. So it's good that we can rest him because he is getting on. Move across to DeAndre Yedlin for you, Sam. T again, two positions. Left back, first half. Right back, second half. How do you get on? He did okay. Well, he, he did fine. I, it's, it's clear to me he's not really comfortable at left back. But um, a lot went through him down, down, the, um, down the left. 
Um, I thought he was at the back four. I thought he was probably the worst, but I mean, being the worst in a seven nil win isn't exactly a bad thing. Um, again, whether I'm going to be, you know what, I am going to be slightly harsh on him, and I'm going to, for the first time ever, I'm scoring the players. I'm going to do half marks as well. I'm going to give him a seven and a half, just because. Are you surprised to see him start though. Um, no, well, yes and no, because I thought he'd be on a plane to Turkey. Um, That's my opinion, yeah. And I think the fact is Dummett wasn't even on the bench, so he's clearly not quite fully fit yet. Otherwise, I think he would have started left back. But Yedlin is crossing, still needs that bit of work, and that's probably why I'm being very harsh and pernickety on him, but that's why he's only got a seven and a half for me. Yeah. Where are these point fives come in? I'm blaming Carl I don't know. That. I think it came oh. with the new lads, but I, I, I'm converted. Oh, I'm not having none of these no point fives added on. None of that, nah. But he gets a 7.5. I'm not controlling. Uh, that's up to Sam. But um, I'm going to begin with Jamaica, Jake, to Jacob. I can't say his name. God, I'm getting the, the same as I did earlier on when we mean Sam were filming for the adverts. Um, Jacob Murphy was sensational. <laughs> he was absolutely brilliant, particular first half. He was had something impressed the night he had to. I'm going to score him a nine out of ten. Uh, he's right up there for a contender for man the match. Everything was going through in that first half. He was cutting in with his left. What a goal. Brilliant finish. Yes, I know he had all the time in the world, but he's got to put that in the back of the net. He hit the post with his deflected cross. He was having a couple of shots in the first half. He was brilliant, and that'll give Bruce a lot more food for thought going into the Spurs game um, because I feel that third position behind the striker, if... Bruce goes back to one up top it's between him and Fraser lot later on in the season. But yeah, Murphy, brilliant. Nine out of ten. My man of the match. Your man of the match, yeah. Central he started all. Although uh, Almiron got the assist for the first goal, Murphy made that goal by taking it into the corner, passing it back to, uh, and taking out three Morecambe defenders just like that. Worked so hard for it. I thought it was superb. Morecambe and Wise for you, wasn't it? It was brilliant. And moving on to... Uh, I had to get that in there somewhere. Moving into Sean Longstaff, we've got the full netty, Adam. Um, a lot of shots, didn't he? In particular, second half, he was desperate to get on the goal score sheet. Yeah, I thought he was a lot more positive than he was last week against Blackburn. Um, I, I said in the in the show last week after Blackburn, he, he didn't impress me at all, but he was a bit better today. Um, I think he showed a bit more idea why he wants to be in the start of 11 last week. I just felt he was just he was just coasting around the game. Um, tried to get some shots off. His passing was flying. Um, but again, not put under a lot of pressure. I'd, I'd give him an eight. I'm not going to be too critical on him. Um, again, he, he, uh, similar to Kieran Clark, as I said before, I think Sean's going to find it tough there. Unless there's a serious injury to get into the team this year, unless he really steps the game up. Yeah, Shelby will come straight back in. You would have thought if he's fit, which we don't expect him not to be. But um, Isaac Hayden, um, for you, Sam, you got roughly, what, an hour, 65 minutes. Got a goal going forward. Yeah. It was deflected in. I mean, there's not many who didn't score, to be fair. Deflected in, and literally on the stroke of half time. Defensively, was he tested? No, I thought he was solid. I was actually surprised to see him start. I thought Barlaza would get the nod. Um, maybe something in the back of Bruce's mind just had it that the Barlaza long staff combination in the centre of the park didn't really work against Blackburn. So maybe that influenced that decision. But um, Hayden, it was a typical Isaac Hayden performance. Solid, steady goal, which wasn't typical, but still nice. It was nice to get a goal. Uh, yeah, solid, 8 out of 10. And um, a good run out ready for Spurs on Sunday for him. Yeah, yeah, eight out of ten was brilliant. Um, Adam, I'll come to you on this one. Matt Ritchie, who played again two positions, he played left midfield, and then when Fraser came on, he dropped to left back. Um, how do you think he got on? Uh, again, uh, I don't think he got involved in. You know, I don't think he assisted any goals, but an eight out of ten for me again, solid. Uh, his work rates up there as it always was. He, you know, I think we we'll, can we'll expect him to play in that left back position a lot more this season. Um, but yeah, again, just one of them games. It's, we're going to end up seeing a lot of the same stuff about the same players because it was just, you know, one of them games. But he never let us down. He, he, he kept going. He was getting stuck in. Um, good to see him get ninety minutes. Um, so yeah, it's another solid performance from Richie. 
Yeah, it was another solid. Probably be back on the bench, you would think, again, for Sunday's yeah. game. I'll have, I'll have Miggy. Um, brilliant assist through ball. Jacob Murphy, obviously, off the ball movement. I'm going to give him a nine for Miggy's performance. And I think the, the last few games, especially in the Cup, um, and coming off the bench as well uh, on the weekend, he was the best of a bad bunch on the weekend. But he's got a star for me on Sunday. I think he's deserved oh. that now. He's lost two or three performances. Round of the Couldn't goalkeeper. Uh, I think he's got to start on Sunday and kind of just walked it in when he was rounded and thought, ooh, I'll just take my time. And obviously we had Mr. Rojas on the black and white, not the black and white, the Jonathan and Greenwood show. The Jonathan uh, and Greenwood show. Uh, <laughs> hi. It's my show as well. Mulliner. The Greenwood and Mulliner show. There's too many shows going on. That's what we do Yeah, at Newcastle Fans TV. But yeah, Roberto Rojas was obviously on the show. Uh, he's been on the channel a good few times and obviously he was singing his praises. And again, for me, Miggy starts 9 out of 10. Sam, I'm going to give you the pleasure, the pleasure of speaking positivity, yes, do subscribe, of our top goal scorer this season, the Brazilian that is Joe Linton. Sing his praises, please. Um, right. Well, he scored a wonder. He did score a wonder. and That's why he's getting a 9 out of 10. He should have had a hat-trick. Yeah. He should have had a hat trick. What was he? Do? I mean, all right, it was only 1 0 at the time. So I think it obviously all worked out in the end, but he just watched Murphy's cross <laughs> hit the post and then just didn't move. I think he just thought, oh, well done, Jacob. I'll let you have this goal. And it just drifted past in front of him and didn't go in. So that was a bit of head in hands moment. His positioning still irritates me a little bit. But apart from that, he was, he was superb tonight. Really well taken. Um, second goal. Um, beautiful stuff. Um, was busy. Actually held the ball up quite well against these rough and tough League Two defenders. Um, yeah, <laughs> top scorer for the season now, like you say. But scored two goals. Fair play to him. And okay, it's Morecambe, but it's so clear that he's a confidence player. And it doesn't matter who you score your goals against. When you score goals as a striker or whatever he is. Um, it gives him, it'll give him confidence moving forward. So I doubt it'll be a turning point, but you never know. <laughs> right. Then you've mentioned confidence there, Sam. The strike has just scored two goals. Does he start on Sunday? Don't be Forget silly. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Forget about, forget about the name for a second. A striker has just scored two goals tonight. Does he start? Uh, no. Wilson starts because he's the best striker and offers much more for the team against a, qu a quality opposition in Tottenham Hotspur as opposed to 10-man Morecambe. So, okay. you know, it, it, maybe maybe a game... i tell you what, maybe a game for him and Wilson to start up front is Burnley at home. Or Newport again. But I want to flip it on a 10, Adam. If you're putting a striker back on the bench, it's just scored two goals. Surely that knocks his confidence more. Uh, I'm not... I, I agree with you. I'm not sure if Bruce will start him, but I think... It gives someone Bruce to think about them starting ahead of Carroll. Whether Bruce will change his tactics on Sunday, I, I've got a feeling he might start Jonathan and Wilson up front on Sunday. Not just because he scored two against Morton, but Carroll missed a sit tonight that will probably go on to as well. Carroll's not full of confidence scoring goals. We have to go and score a goal against Tottenham this weekend to get something. Um, but Bruce, I, I don't know. There's, there's part. There's someone in the back of my mind. I've just got this feeling. You know what Bruce is like. He just might start Jalinton to get his... I think he's been waiting for Jalinton to score a couple of goals, which he now has. Ah, he all beat against Morton. But as again, if you go and drop him, will his head go even further down? I, I don't know. It's, would I, I wouldn't start Jalinton personally. But I'm just trying to think in Bruce's mind, which not many people can. But I've got a feeling he could this Sunday start Jalinton ahead of Carroll. But and unless, Carroll's not going to Yeah, and let's not forget who got the win at White Hart Lane last season. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Again. We're speaking very positive of him tonight. I'm trying to. I mean, if he him. does do it again, will you cry for us on camera again? Yeah, I was in Tiaz last season. At least I won't talk about cricket when the football's going on. Right. First substitute was Ryan Fraser. Adam, you can have him. you got 45 minutes. Yeah, I'll give him a 7 out of 10. Um, Try to get on the ball a lot. Try to get involved a lot. A couple of good crosses. I thought he worked quite well with Richie, actually. Um, Richie was overlapping him quite a bit. Um, I think in the harder games, if Maximum's injured, them two would work well together up and down the pitch. Um, but see, I think he tried a couple of shots off again. One of them games, but seven out of ten, yeah, not, did nothing wrong. 
just more minutes in the legs from. He hit the bar as well, didn't he? He hit the bar. And the advertising hold him. <laughs> he did. I think well. he missed a good header as well. Actually. For a little short guy, yeah, he got about the night. Busy B, didn't he? Okay, so 7 out of 10 uh, for the Scottish International. I'll have Dan Bar laser. Uh, not just the fact because he knows my family members or so on, but I really wanted Dan to start tonight. I did. Uh, he didn't, but I was disappointed about I lost a score my seven. Some nice touches. Again, long balls, can pass a ball. We know that. He's he's a very the next nearest thing to John Joe Shelby in that aspect where he can hit it left and right. And for me, I, I've already said this, I've defended him last week. I would have him in my 25-man squad this season just as an alternative. The lads might disagree on that, but we'll talk about that another day when the 25-man squad is released. But yeah, good performance from Dan. For me, I would have liked the same start. Andy Carroll, you've got him, Sam. Missed that gill edge sit. I kind of reminded me, remember last season, I think, was it way to Brighton? Was it Brighton away? It was literally... Yeah, it was, yeah, it's nil, nil. It was nil, nil. It was right the same distance and he heads it wide again from Brighton and tonight. Should have put that away, man. He's desperate for his first goal. Yeah, that's why he's getting the lowest of the lot, which is a six. But um, <sighs> there was an argument. I kind of wanted to see him brought on at half time in a way, and I wanted like Miggy to be taken off to save him for Spurs because I'm desperate for him to start at Spurs on Sunday. I just don't know. <sighs> is he ever going to score for us again? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's two really good chances now, like you you say uh, about the Brighton one. I mean, I, I would start him against Newport now in the next round. Um, it, it's going to be one of them games where he's, that's that's going to be his game to get off the mark. I hope, but um, the the kind of the foot was off the gas when he did come on, so um, there wasn't as many chances presented to him. Maybe there would have been had he come on earlier or started the game. So, um, yeah, six out of ten. Right, and Steve Bruce then. So he is expected to win tonight. We didn't expect to win comprehensively like that. And I'll say again, Newcastle did win 7-0, Adam Kill. I know it's Morecambe. I'm going to enjoy it tonight. 7-0, man, 7-0. But maybe a couple of surprises in the lineups there. But, Adam, I'll come to you first. What are you going to score Bruce, and then we'll try and agree collectively on on the tonight's performance. Pardon me. I think he took the tie seriously, um, which is you've got to give him a step for. Um, we've we've had managers in the past who put the under twenty threes team out in, in these type of ties. I think he was worried about losing this. I know Morton, he, he, you know, he was Morton were a poor team, but to start hitting over, you know, Balasa who started last week, he started Lascelles for a confidence boost. He had a strong team out. Um, so I, 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 he went for the tie. That's all I can ask for him. For as, as you know, as a fan or manager, I wanted to go and win the game. I thought he put a team out. Um, it's, I thought his substitutions were, you know, right. So I, again, I'm not going to give him a ten, but I'll, I'll give him an eight out of ten just for, for getting us through the tie. An eight out of ten for Bruce. So get out. I'll score. Um, I, I kind of, kind of similar to you, but I'm going to go nine because of the performance, not because we we'll get through. I'm expecting to get through. But it was just easy. And I know the red card when we already 4 0 up made the game slower, effective, because they, they put 10 men behind the ball. But it was already comfortable when we were 4 0 up, anyways, with the red card. But the performance, in particular, first half was sensational. Um, will we play like that again this season? No, we're not. Even if it's against the lower league, that was brilliant by Bruce. And the, the performance did take it seriously, like you said, Adam. Um, just on the man out of the performance for the first. 45 to an hour, I'm going to score my name. And Sam, you've got the deciding factor. Can I chicken out and go 8.5? Do you want to, do you want to put a, I'm not controlling. If you want to put a point five, you can do. Do you know what? I actually might. Um, I, I agree with kind of both uh, with what you say. I mean, I was leaning towards, I was leaning towards eight just because it was League Two more than with 10 men. But the way they've won. I mean, I compared this game again on the preview uh, last night to kind of like when England played Andorra back in the day and you can't really win. Or Panama. Into, yeah. So, played some lovely stuff, pinged it around nicely, um, took it seriously, um, 
just ticked all the boxes really and we're on another cup run and we've got a great chance now in um, beating Newport to reach the quarterfinals so fingers crossed we don't mess it up in uh, in South Wales Oh he knows his location it's on the way to Cardiff uh, Brucey gets an 8.5 from us three uh, let us know if you agree and disagree remember these are individual performances so the players we don't all agree necessarily with each other uh, drop your comments if you're watching the rerun. If you're watching the premiere, of course, um, we have been reading and interacting in the live chat. But coming up in a couple of hours or so, uh, you'll have me with you, and I'll be dissecting. I would say normally the game, but it's not. It's going to be the goals because I'm not going to wait for the goal. Uh, we'll have a look at the lineups, of course, and we'll get a bit of reaction from one of these two as well. Um, but yeah, keep it, just keep tuned to that, and then obviously with the, the attention will switch uh, to later on in the week with the Spurs one and. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of an exclusive. We've got a former Newcastle defender coming on the Greenwood and Mullinash show. All shall be revealed maybe later in the week. Who knows? Take care, everyone. Tada. Bye bye.